In this movie, we're going to use the ellipse tool to draw all these circles, and then we're going to switch over to the live paint tool to fill them in. Normally, I like to draw in a red stroke and no fill because it's easier to see what I'm doing underneath. But since this has a lot of red in it, I'm just going to use a green stroke and no fill. If you hold down Option when you draw from the center, you um, if you hold down Option when using the ellipse tool, you can draw from the center. I'm going to copy Command C and then um, paste in front and F. And I'm just going to continue drawing these ellipses until I have all the ones that I need and then I'll use the live paint tool to fill them in. Copy and paste in front. Copy and paste in front again. Now this one, I'm going to need to use the rotate tool. You can get to it by pressing the letter R or clicking on the rotate tool tool in the toolbar panel and you'll notice that that this one this ellipse over here isn't quite it's not a perfect circle it's an oval and it's kind of at an angle Copy, paste in front. Okay, now that I have all of my ellipses, I'm just going to select them all and... Oh, looks like I have my background image not locked down, so I'm just going to lock that by pressing Command-2. I think it's under Object Lock. It would be there, but I've already locked it. So now I'm just going to go through and grab all these ellipses. I'm just going to remove the stroke because I don't... The stroke is just going to get in the way for this next part. Now we're going to go to the, the Live Paint tool. And it used to be that you'd have to use the Pathfinder tool to you know, break all this up into the black parts and the yellow parts and the orange parts. And that's just a pain and I don't want to do it. Uh, so what we're going to do... It, it The live paint bucket tool, it kind of works like you'd expect it to. It's a paint bucket and it's really intuitive and you just click in the areas that you want it to fill. And I need to add some swatches here. I'm going to, because we, we don't have any colors to work with and you know, whenever I'm painting I need some colors to work with. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add that swatch. It's black. And then I'm going to add some, some yellow ones and some orange ones. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to help me out with this. I'm going to add a white swatch. If you hold down, if you just press the new swatch button, you have to click through this dialog box every time. But if you hold down the option key while you click on the new swatch button, it just, it just puts the swatch there, which is what I want. I don't want to have to click yes every time and approve the settings. And we'll do a light yellow. 
going to scoot this guy over here. Okay, so now I've got my swatches to work with. I'm going to select all of these empty paths, and I'm going to go to the Live Paint Bucket tool. <clears throat> and you'll notice there's the three, uh, right below the cursor, there's the three little, little color swatches. And what those do, if you use your right and left arrow keys, and if I had more swatches in here, I could also have, you know, the up and down arrow keys. But just by navigating, you can navigate through the color swatches just by using the arrow keys. So I'm going to go left over two, and there's black, and that's what I want to work with. You can choose to live paint either the fill or the stroke, but in this case, I just want to use the fill. So I've got, I've got black. It's the one in the little swatch in the center under the cursor. So I'm just going to start dropping the color where I want it. And you'll you'll notice that it you'd think that the whatever is underneath the little dripping paint is where where it would actually put the fill color, but it's not. It's whatever is under this black arrow. See, like over here, I would kind of think that I would be dripping the color into the paint bucket with the paint dripping out of it, but no. I'm dropping the color. I'm actually painting what's under this black arrow. And Illustrator is handy in that it, it will highlight the shape area that it's going to be filling. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. So I'm going to go over to the layers panel and I'm just going to hide that image so I can see what I missed. And I, I did indeed miss some things. All right. Now I'm going to go through and color these these center areas. Bring my swatches panel back up. And again, I still have the Life Paint Bucket tool selected, so I can just scooch over to the right a couple of swatches, and then I can start dropping some color in. I'm going to go back to the layers panel just to see if I missed any areas, and I did. Now, one thing to keep in mind when using this tool is that all of these these act, act as a single object. They're a live paint object as you'll see here in the layers panel. And it makes it makes editing the gradients a little a little tricky. <laughs> so it, it's it's easy once you know how to do it, but figuring out how to get at these gradients, um, it's it's a little a little weird because you'll see that these these shapes here, this doesn't act Life Paint treats it as sort of a half moon or a moon shape, but but Illustrator still is treating it as a single a single object, a single circle. And so that's what makes this a live paint. You can move these shapes around and they're going to they're gonna um, they're live. All the, the color work is live in them. So you don't have to have a bunch of compound shapes and like if you wanted to change the shape of this this yellow one, you don't have to change the yellow and the black and the red shape. You can just you can just move one of them. I'm gonna adjust that. You know, see how the black automatically fills in there because Illustrator knows that 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 area there is supposed to be black. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to edit the colors within a live paint group. How to how to change these solid fill colors into gradient.